Is what I'm about to show you a fantastic idea, or is it an unreasonable, potentially unlawful interference with your right to freedom that is fraught with problems and difficulties? All will become clear, but first of all, I will have to thank uh, Charlie Veach in advance because he doesn't know that I'm doing this yet. Uh, so I'll tag him in the description. So go and subscribe if you haven't already uh, for this little bit of footage here. This is what I'm talking about. Get a load of this and then I'll talk to you about it. Well, we're back at the one and only, the one and only knife arch. Now, uh, this is quite a provocative location for it because obviously here being a major tram stop, they're going to have a lot of people refusing, not wanting to go through it, saying, oh, I've got a pacemaker on. I've got, I've got an iron left testicle. To please don't set off my left testicle. It'll, it'll start buzzing. And I think we're going to have some rich pickings here today, guys. So if it wasn't obvious already, the police have deployed a knife arch, metal detector type thing, to uh, force people to walk through it. Um, obviously, if it beeps, I suspect they then put, either pull them aside for a search or they send them back where they came from. Um, and I do believe we're about to see somebody refuse to go through. So let's see what happens there. OK, here we go. Oh, no, it's OK. Just, I'm just getting shots of people walking through the knife arch. Oh, you've got good taste, young man. Good on you. Good on you, guys. Yeah, yeah, all the best. Beep, 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 oh no! Now I promise you, my viewers, that it's not going to be all knife arch based content today. There's a whole city for us to explore and have fun in. But my crackhead senses are tingling. This knife arch experiment invariably, sooner rather than later, does provide results. Oh, we've got a guy refusing the knife arch. We've got our first refusal. Yeah, if he, uh, he's got the red, white, and black hat. He's been sent back. So there we go. Somebody refused to go through, and he's been sent back. So first of all, um, most of you probably know by now, I am a fan of the stop and search, because for what it's worth, I think if you're not carrying anything that's dangerous and etc., then you've got no real reason to refuse a stop and search. If it were me, I would just say, go for it. I'm not actually carrying anything of any danger whatsoever. But there is a potential problem, which I'll come back to in a minute. But these knife arches are nothing new, really. In fact, we can go to the official page here from uh, Greater Manchester Police. Um, this is a recent article, but this is not a new thing. These have been in place for some time. It says, over the course of this week, specialised officers from the dedicated team Operation Venture, who are dealing with serious violence in key hotspot areas such as Bolton, Oldham, South Manchester, on a regular basis, were supported by officers at all districts from uh, Thameside, Wigan and Rochdale and uh, the Trafford. Uh, from knife arches deployed at key areas, they say, throughout the day and night, to scheduled warrants, intelligence patrols and searches, uh, test purchasing operations, so they're going into shops, seeing whether they can uh, buy certain things, um, outdoor knife amnesty bins and assisting with in, uh, intercepting packages. All this activity resulted in the following. 45 school engagement visits around knife crime and devastating consequences, 51 test purchases, uh, with only five retailers failing. This is to do with age verification and all that sort of stuff and um, whatever other tests that they do. 90 weapon sweeps of key locations with positive fines. 268 arrests combined with included knife-related and knife-enabled robbery offences. 282 knives recovered directly from Amnesty Bin. So as I said, you probably know by now that I am a fan of the stop and search because it does produce results. It does get knives off the streets, but it's not without its problems. But again, before we come to that, just a very quick look at one of these documents here. This is a stop and search principles document talking about the arches here. Um, the term screening arch referred to uh, other labels such as search arch or knife arch is the process of passing through the arch is not a search. Some people might think that this is a search, and I agree with this document, it is not a search as such. It is just a request for somebody to go, to go through this arch. Um, there are certain areas um, such as 
we could look at um, Section 60 of the Criminal Justice and Public Order Act 1994, where there's certain um, powers to stop and search in anticipation or even after certain uh, violence, etc. But as it says here, the deployment of screening arches is a useful tactic to disrupt, detect and deter those from committing knife enabled robbery and violence against the person, creating a safe environment for the public free from crime and providing public assurance. Now, as again, I say um, I am a fan of doing everything they can to remove knives from the streets, etc., because of the amount of violence. There is a problem with it, a potential problem with it at least, and that is what if somebody is carrying something that is perfectly legal? Now, something that is perfectly legal might be a folding pocket knife, which is covered under Section 139 of the Criminal Justice Act 1988. Now, I caveat here, I do not recommend anybody carrying a pocket knife. Um, not least of which because it could be taken from you in a scuffle and then there's a knife in, in the confrontation. So I just don't think that's a good idea. And in certain places, such as that place there and on trains and things like that, if you are stopped and then if you go through one of these arches, for example, if you are stopped and then if you are searched, because there might be reasonable grounds to suspect that you're carrying something, if you go through the arch and it beeps, or even if you refuse to go through it. Now, in that case there, the guy was just sent back where he came from. But there might be a reasonable ground to suspect that he's carrying something if he refuses to go through. That's an entirely separate argument, which I'm not going to go into here. Now, under Section 139, it is an offence to have with you any article with a blade or sharply pointed, unless it's a folding pocket knife and unless you have a good reason to have it with you. So it's a defence for a person charged if they prove that they have a good reason uh, or lawful authority. Now, a good reason is not an excuse. So, for example, not I forgot I had it with me. That's an excuse. It's not a good reason. A good reason might be, let's say you're doing work at a shop and you've got a box of tools and in it has got a, um, a utility knife with a locking blade, etc., which is something to come back to. You're on the way to do the job and then you're on the way back from the job and that is your good reason because you are going to, to or from work, etc. But having it in your pocket and you're in the pub because you forgot that you had it with you is an excuse, not a good reason, just to clear that up. But the folding pocket knife bit is where we may come into a bit of a problem because a folding pocket knife is that which is something like this, which is immediately foldable at all times and the blade does not exceed three inches. You can see that it's immediately foldable because it doesn't lock and the blade does not exceed three inches. Therefore, this is a folding pocket knife. Now, this, um, first of all, I wouldn't recommend you carrying this around anyway, even though it would be um, exempt under Section 139 because it is an exempt folding pocket knife. But regardless of being a folding pocket knife, there are certain places that you just should not have this with you anyway. For example, football stadiums, bars, clubs, pubs, city centres, crowded places, trains, buses, etc., hospitals, schools. You shouldn't have one of these with you, even though um, by itself it would be exempt under Section 139 because it's immediately foldable at all times and it's otherwise a folding pocket knife. But that's why I say don't have it with you. And um, if you're in a crowded place or you're attempt attempting to get on a train, you go through one of these knife arches, it beeps, you get searched, they find this on you, you are on the way to the train, you might then find yourself in serious difficulty. And so coming full circle, I do think this is an excellent idea. Um, asking people to go through one of these arches will deter people that have a knife with them because they either won't go through it or if they do try their luck with it, they get found and searched and they get the knife taken off them. So I do think it's a good idea. I think it's quite a sad state of affairs that we found ourselves in this position that we need to put these knife arches in places like this that are hot spots for people carrying knives. But here we are. That's the situation that we are in. But it's not considered a search because you're just invited to go through it if you want to get on the train or wherever it is you're going. And if you do go through and it beeps, that might be a reasonable ground to search you at that point. Um, particularly if there's um, authorization from a senior police officer and potentially even if you refuse to go through it and you were going to go through it because you're walking in that direction, um, there may then be grounds to search you as well. But again, that's a much deeper subject, um, which I'll go on to um, a bit later. But I thought this was interesting. So if you do see these around, just know that they are there for a very good reason. Um, say hi to Charlie when you pop over to subscribe to his channel. And I hope you found that interesting and useful. But for now, thank you for watching.